It's Jim McGuinn from The Current, and we've been having a lot of conversations over the past couple of months with musicians, some putting out new music, some in the middle of uh, whatever is going on in their lives. And right now, I'm very excited to be joined by Gary Loris from the Jayhawks, our old friend. Welcome, Gary. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. It's a pleasure to speak with you, Jim. So you guys uh, just recently announced a new record that uh, is going to come out in July. And now is it, uh, is it XOXO, Hugs and Kisses, or Zoxo? What's the XOXO. XOXO. It's All Elliot, Smith, right. it's Elliot Smith times two. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, XOXO. And why it's called that, I guess we're sending our love. What can I say? That makes a lot of sense. Now, you've uh, you worked on the record throughout the fall, and the big thing that you notice right away from the first single, This Forgotten Town, is that uh, it feels very much like a group effort in terms of vocals and songwriting being shared and divided up among the band. Well, that is the storyline, I think. You know, it, uh, and where, why now, I'm not sure. Just, uh, you know, uh, I think it began with uh, just over a course of time, I realized when we play our shows, it's just like I'm singing 98% of the material and I I just love the other people's voices and their songwriting, and I, I, I'm not particularly good at writing songs for Karen or Tim, and um, so, and I know they're songwriters, and I just kind of push them to, 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 uh, to you know, to, to express themselves more. And I, I, I'd worked on a solo record that will come out afterwards, so you know, I didn't have a huge backlog of stuff, um, and it just seemed like the stars aligned, you know, to to, to uh, have it more of a collaborative effort. And did they uh, come prepared with their own songs and have uh, material to offer into the mix that just kind of felt right for this album and where you guys are at at this point? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we started uh, recording uh, in, uh, I think it was November or September, November, I think, at Pachyderm, and then we finished up in December in uh at flowers court ed's Ed studio flowers in minneapolis but i had been flying in from north carolina every month since april and spending a week at a time with a band and um uh writing and jamming and and uh so it was kind of a it was a process <clears throat> and then you know whittling it all down was was difficult but uh um yeah, so it's it's been a work in progress for quite a while. What was it like going to two uh, really classic Minnesota studios for you in particular being uh, coming in from out of town, not being local at the time, but uh, coming back to go to those studios? And what do those two different studios mean to you? Well, I'm still, even though I was, I'm not one of you, I wasn't born and raised in Minnesota. I lived in Minnesota since 1973, so... You know, it still always feels like home, and it's going to be my home again. But, um, uh, you know, I had worked down at Pachyderm uh, for uh, various things, including some uh, B-sides and a couple, one or two songs from Hollywood Town Hall proper uh, that did some things with the Golden Smog, did some things with the other bands that I sat in with, whether it was, you know, I sold a song for one. So I was familiar with it, but I know it had kind of gone down uh, a bit, and then it was purchased, and, and uh, it, 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 they've, they've really done a great job uh, getting it back to where it was. Um, and wh what we liked about that was that we could kind of be out of town and away from the day-to-day -day errands and things, distractions, and yet still be close enough. You know, Karen has a 20-year-old daughter, Tim has a dog. Mark has. Uh, well, I'm not sure what Mark has, but he <laughs> he he, uh, he has a life, is what he has. Um, and so they could still kind of, if there was an emergency, they could go. But we, what it did was, is, was it was kind of like a retreat, a band retreat, where we we ate together, drank together, mm -hmm. you know, fixed the meals, listened to music, hung out as a like a family, and it really kind of brought us. We were already tight, but you know, I think it just took it up a notch. And uh, I think with everybody being having a little more ownership, 
to certain songs, everybody felt a little bit more vested in uh, invested in it. And then, of course, Ed's Studio Flowers is is one of the great studios I've worked in. And um, Ashley and Annika were nice enough to have us there, and we worked with uh, KJ, um, who is so uh, so so perfect uh, for us. Um, and and so that place was just it's just like a little playground, you know, with all this great equipment, and and that was great because then people could go home, and if they weren't overdubbing, they didn't have to sit there the whole time, and so it worked really well. Uh, the two different sides of the of the coin worked really well. It's a long way from uh, the dream to be in some place like L.A. making a record that probably was more prevalent in the early 90s. So now it's about being closer to the family. And, you know, you're talking about those two great studios, Pachyderm, the place where most famously, I guess, Nirvana recorded in utero, PJ Harvey worked there. Tons of records have been made out of there for 30 years. And uh, Ed Ackerson, the former owner of uh, Flowers Studio, who passed away back in October, a friend of all of ours and so many in our music community. And you guys were really the first band uh, to go back in there and start working after Ed uh, had passed away and his longtime uh, engineer, Chris Johnson, uh, working on that record with you. Um, and I know that you had worked a lot with Ed over the years on Golden Smog and on Jayhawks Records in the past. Um, was that hard to, to be there in that studio at that time? It was, uh, it was beautiful, but strange, strangely beautiful in that uh, you did not to be get cliche, but I felt we felt his presence all the time there, yeah. and it felt like um, I know we, we, I had talked to Ed before uh, he passed away about working there and doing the record there, and then that became somewhat uh, impossible for a while. But um, I think it was just a, all around a good thing for us. It was a good thing for Ashley. It was uh, just the right thing to do. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I loved working in L.A., don't get me wrong. Those studios, um, we worked in some of the best studios in the world, you know, Ocean Way, Sound City, uh, uh, Sunset Sound, Village Recorders, um, all those. And uh, there's nothing quite like those L.A. studios, but times are different now where you can't just go out and spend four months in L.A. and... and and make a record and um so yeah uh we're lucky yeah. we have great studios in minneapolis and that's uh, right nearby yeah absolutely uh so i don't know if you've been like most of the world and fallen down any youtube rabbit holes lately but i got on a whole kinks binge the other day and that led me to some of the collaborative stuff that uh you got to do with ray davies on those uh, americana solo records that he put out what did you pick up from that experience that you've brought to the Jayhawks since that uh, opportunity to work with a guy like him? Well, it was an honor to work with him. He was always one of my heroes. This right, the old joke, who's greater, the Beatles or the Stones? And the answer is the Kinks. But, you know, uh, I was, you know, a huge. I'm a, I still forever, I'm a Kinks fan. I still can't believe that I... That we got to, to 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 record with him and got to be friends with him and stay in touch, um, but uh, you know I think mostly his attention to detail and his theatrical side, his theatrical uh, instructions of how to do things were not so much musical but more emotional and um, yeah his direction was it was very much like a more like a theater. Than, than music. So how's it been for you being off the road? Because uh, the Jayhawks have been super busy in between your solo work and your other collaborations. You guys have been doing a lot of touring over the last few years. Is this one of the more extended absences you've had from live gigs? And what are you doing to fill up your time right now? Well, um, painting. You can see this beautiful painting I've been working on. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's, I think, a paint by numbers that's at this little cabin I'm staying in. Um, well, I don't mean to I'd correct you, but we actually haven't toured that much over the last few years by design. Um, after paging Mr. Proust, I kind of looked at the bottom line and said, you know, we're doing a lot of gigs for 
to get to the next weekend and it wasn't we didn't we didn't so we're not 21 and, and yeah it's nice to be on a tour bus but people always go why would you not want to get on a tour bus and but if you're doing it every day and we're at that level where you don't get a hotel and a tour bus you get a tour bus and on your nights off you get a hotel and you start living on the bus you start going a little nutty but um uh, we didn't tour very much, and, and we started just, uh, and I found, we all found we missed it. And uh, and so we had planned on at least doubling, if not more, the amount of shows we were going to play this year versus the last couple of years. So, I mean, we were geared up to do more, and then, of course, uh, COVID happened, and everything's been uh, uh, put on hold. Uh, everything's in limbo. Um I, you know, I like a lot of people just trying to catch up on things that I haven't done, uh, that have been sitting there. Um, I've been in the process of moving and things, so I have a lot of ducks I have to get in the row. But, um, um, and then I have my, uh, my streaming show, which I will plug, um, called the SH Asterisk T Show, which you can see on Facebook Live. Uh, most Wednesdays. I th we're doing one on Wednesday. My son's going to join me. That'll be on at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. They're also archived on YouTube. And I kind of resisted doing that. I thought, ah, I don't know if I want to do those. And everybody's doing them. And But I started doing them. And I, I have to tell you, I just, I look so forward to it because it's, um, it feels, I feel connected to the outside world. People react and uh, it seems to be helping people or they enjoy it it gives brightens their day a bit and you know it's uh loose and i can be more intimate as far as you know i've never been the big rock and roll shouter on stage so this is like i can play quietly and play deeper cuts or requests and so i've been doing that and uh walking a lot i'm living out here in the country right now and it's this west Saugerties. Woodstock, Bearsville area is, you know, it's, it's gorgeous. So I've been uh, exercising a lot and uh, and and playing. And yeah. uh, that's about it. Reading and uh, not much else. Well, it sounds like uh, kind of what everyone else is doing, getting involved in. So Yeah. Well, Jim, I, I did, you know, I have been in touch with my other musician friends because, although I don't just hang out with musicians, but... Um, they we all say kind of the same thing now granted it's tragedy out there people dying and um compromised or can't work or worried about this but for a lot of musicians our life isn't that much different than it was pre-virus because we were born isolators most artists uh musicians in particular can tend to be isolators so you know for us I'm not a big social animal, so this, other than the difficulties of, uh, you know, canceled shows and and how to go somewhere without feeling like you're going uh, to catch something, it, it, my life isn't that much different. I did see your uh, your bandmates here at a show in the Twin Cities when John Wesley Harding played the Hook and Ladder just a couple of weeks before we all went into isolation, and it was uh, great to see all of them out. Just as it's great to hear them now, even on this uh, the first single, this Forgotten Town, hearing Karen's voice and Tim's voice, and you know, it's 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 still got the classic uh, things that I think people love about the Jayhawks music, but it's sort of expanded into including all their works and uh it's probably a good sign that someone that's been in a band with their you know bandmates for 30 some years could still go out on a wednesday night to see a show together well wesley will do that to you because wesley is a uh is a uh is a magnet you know and uh yeah it's, it's funny to think about that I, i'm thinking also about our last shows that we played live we're in brooklyn on march 6th and 7th and then we played a show in northampton massachusetts on the 8th and that was i remember going out it was just starting where you started to feel like you're not supposed to touch and people were elbow bumping for the first time but people were still out and and i i remember even the first night i went out and kind of slapped everybody's hand on the front of the stage you know after the before we got off and you know 
looking back, it's amazing that uh, we, it, it's hard to believe. It's so sad to watch shows or uh, uh, things where you see people all together and you're like, when is that going to happen again? But uh, it will. Yeah. Well, and hopefully uh, you guys will be back out and able to play shows. Uh, the record's coming out July 10th. Was there any thought of postponing that because of the difficulties touring, or is it full steam ahead and hopefully you'll be ready no, when the time is right? No, full steam ahead. I think the I think our fans would like to hear new music, especially at this time. Music yeah. is pretty much uh, uh, salve. Um, so... No, we, uh, I mean, we weren't planning on hopping on a bus and going on an eight-month tour anyway, so uh, we will be playing, we'll be, may be making up these dates, we're looking at possibly doing some live shows for the venues we were going to play, and maybe not, not charge for it, it wouldn't be in lieu of the show we would play, but, um, you know, we're trying to find creative ways to do it once I'm back in town, which will be make it easier for us to do things as a group, and... Uh, so uh, we will figure it out, but we will um, be re releasing the record as planned. It's Gary Loris from the Jayhawks. Thanks for spending some time today and uh, look forward to you being back in the Twin Cities fairly soon. And um, good luck with the move. And then can't wait to uh, see the Jayhawks back together. Mark Perlman, Tim O'Regan, Karen Groperg, great band for so long and with a uh, really great sounding new record, uh, XOXO, and the first single, This Forgotten Town. And uh, yeah. and the cover of our, of our record is done by a guy named Duncan Hanna, who is, uh, is a New York, fabulous New York artist, who is really a mainstay in the, especially the 70s and 80s rock scene, but he's from Minneapolis, and uh, a new friend of mine, and... Uh, yeah, so very proud of the cover and and uh, you know look him up. He's he's amazing. All roads lead to this forgotten town, apparently. Um, <laughs> I guess so. Are you? Uh, do you ever run into Tommy Stinson? I know he's up in that neck of the woods as well. I have. I ran into him way back a few months ago when he went up to Hudson, New York, and uh, just uh, we were talking about him, and then. We'll, Went in to get some lunch, and there he was with his girlfriend. And yeah, it's a small world. I think that's that's that sounds like Tommy. That's sort of how he rolls. Yeah. He just sort of appears. Yeah, it's uh, Gary Loris yeah, of the Jayhawks. Perfect. Thanks again for uh, hanging out with the current, and hopefully soon we'll have you on. Perhaps maybe we'll have a band doing a virtual session with us in the weeks or months to come. Um, but if not, we look forward to hearing more music off the new record. So thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you.